Guys, so what we're doing today. <laughs> is piecewise graphs, all right? So this is an extension of our linear stuff that we've been doing. It's going to tie into our algebra stuff that we've been doing before that. So we need to have a pretty firm grasp on both of those things, all right? And piecewise graphs are going to be, for our purposes anyway, our linear equations, but broken up into pieces or parts. And so each time we, we might get different graphs for different kind of examples, all right? And it might cover things like parking, postage, bulk buying, et cetera. Things might get cheaper the more you buy. Parking's going to get more expensive, but in steps or levels, the further you go on. And I don't know if anybody sent a letter recently or a parcel, but they usually charge you by weight, which is worthwhile remembering because that's going to be a part of your take home section there. All right, so in order to define our piecewise graphs, we need to think about what we call the domain. Yeah? So the domain is a set of x values where the function is defined. All right, so we're thinking about x values, which is our horizontal axis. Yes? Cool. And we're going to be drawing different equations for different parts. Now, I haven't actually drawn the equations for either of these parts. Normally, you would. You would have y is equal to some function for this, or vice versa. You might have for this, and then y is equal to blah, blah, blah. All right? And sometimes, instead of writing for, you might have 5 less than x, or something like that there in a set of curly brackets. The curly brackets is just a mathematical way of writing a set. Now, if I have two different equations on the same set of axes for two different parts, for two different sets of x values, how would this roughly look on our equation here? All right, we would have how would you read something like this? Anybody have any ideas? I mean, nine, x is greater than zero. X is greater than zero, but x is also less than or equal to five. All right. So I'll go through our arrows in a second on the other side. But the idea is that each of our arrows points to the smaller one. So essentially, if you have two sets of arrows with x in the middle, it's just saying that x is in between those two values. All right, so x is in between 0 and 5. And so it might look, it's not my best version of a straight line, but that's the idea. It goes between 0 and 5 for one equation. All right, and then. The second part, which I've written slightly differently, all right, we've got x is what? It's greater than 5. So x is on the wide side of our arrows. So it's greater than. And you might get something that looks like this. All right, notice how this line is different to this line, but they slightly touch at 5. Yeah? So that's the idea of our domains, just breaking it up into parts defined by our x-axis, not the y. So, a couple things about our piecewise graphs that we need to think about. We need to understand what our less than and greater than signs look like. All right.
All right. So, just what I was saying before, our each time we have one of these arrows, it's going to be pointing to the smaller one. Other people might have different ways to remember that. All right. Some people like the crocodile example. I think we've spoken about that before. All right. Where, for some reason, it eats the bigger one, which doesn't seem like how nature works, but that's just me. Anyways, so think about it pointing to the smaller one. So in this case, x is going to be less than 3. Next one we have, x is I'm going to run out of room. Alright. Now, with this extra line underneath, what does that add to it? Just gotta take a bit more room. So we've got x is is it less than or greater than? Cool. Less than five. Is that it? No, what have I done? Less than or equal to 5. And then clearly this last one's going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 3. All right, just to recap our less than, greater than signs, we should get a grasp on those. All right. So, last thing we need to know about piecewise graphs, besides the linear stuff that we've already been spending time on, is... what these dots mean at the end of our line. So the idea is that we're trying to define functions that are defined for every single x value along the axis, yeah? All right. You might not be fully aware of that, but that's OK. And so the idea is when our functions are broken like this, broken into parts, Otherwise, it's called a step graph because it looks kind of like steps. You might see another one up here like that. All right, remember this graph because it is going to be on your assignment. We need to understand what the open dot means and the closed dot. They're going to mean less than, or well, not less than, greater than. It actually is going to mean either equal to or not equal to. All right. So, so you have spoken about both different symbols. All right. At the boundaries for each of our functions, we need to make sure that we know whether it's equal to down here. All right. So if this might be time and hours for your parking. And so for the first hour, you might be charged $3. And then the second hour, you might be charged $4.50. Third hour, you might be charged, um, I don't know, let's just go, $6. All right, one, two, et cetera. All right, so at one hour, if this is the graph you were given, Am I being charged $3 or am I being charged $4.50? All right. Without understanding what these dots mean, 
we can't really make that decision. All right. The open dot means, well, I'll start with the closed dot because it's a lot easier to understand. This is the is equal to at that point. All right. And then clearly the open dot would be the opposite. All right. So going by our open or closed dot, closed dot's down here at the end of the one hour. All right. So is it equal to $3 at this side or is it equal to $4.50? $3, okay. Closed dot is equal to, closed dot ends at the one hour here and then continues up here. So one hour and one minute, you're going to start getting charged $4.50. But at exactly one hour, you're just going to be charged the three. And anything less than that. All right. So for two hours, exactly two hours, am I charged $4.50 or $6? $4.50. Okay. Close dots here. All right. So that's where we're at. Let's go through a couple of examples from the book. All right. I'm going to get rid of this. I recommend you read through the beginning of the chapter for the, for the text. It's probably going to help you understand where these graphs are coming from a bit better. But for now, let's look at the first couple questions from our text. So now we're on to chapter 9, we're going to be looking at piecewise graphs, and you start getting into things that look pretty funky like that. All right. Copy and complete the following statements for the piecewise defined function, shown on the right. Let me just zoom in a bit more. Still cough, Carol, it's fine. All right, copy and complete the following statements for a piecewise to graph, piecewise to find graph shown on the right. So, it's already given us the domains. It says for x less than zero, so thinking about your x axis, how far across you are, less than zero is anything left of here. All right, we have this line here. All right, so we need to be able to find the equation for that line. And then we've got to find the equation of the second line, which is between 0 and 4, All right, along the x-axis, because that's what our domain tells us. And then x is greater than 4 or, and equal to anywhere past that. So practicing our linear stuff, we need to be able to come up with equations for these lines. Easiest way to do that when you've been given the picture is think about our steps. Okay? So what's the change in x, change in y? Each time. Alright, so at this point here, compared to this point, how much has y changed? Going from 0 to minus 1. So it's gone down by 1, yeah? And x is gone. Great. <laughs> x is gone from negative 4 to negative 3, so it's increased by 1. 
Yeah? So change in Y over the change in X. Change in Y over the change in X, that's our slope. All right, which we would just write as negative one. How do we read the y-intercept for a graph drawn like that? It's usually pretty simple. What do you reckon, Sean? All right. Wherever it intercepts the y-axis is your y-intercept. So, got m, we have c. So we can say this is negative x. Take four. All right, those are the two parts that we need to be able to define. Slope, y-intercept, and thankfully, because we've been given the picture, it should make this a little bit easier and a little bit quicker for us. All right, same thing. We're going to be finding whole points along that line, the second line. First of all, what's my y-intercept for my second line? It's negative 4. It connects at the same point our last line did. All right, so that's pretty simple to read. And then we have slope, which we need to consider. It's a positive slope, because it's increasing. It's going up to the right. We need to think about how much y changes. So it's going from negative 4 to negative 2, which means it's Increase of 2. It's going across 1. So change in y over change in x means we have a slope of 2. All right. So how would we write this now? y is equal to m2 x take 4. All right, we'll try this again with this graph down here, which is going to get a little bit trickier. But final line, horizontal. How do we define horizontal lines? All right, it's got to be y is equal to. We're already told that, thankfully. All right, but because it's a horizontal line, what isn't changing? It's not changing up or down. Y is not changing. So what is Y equal to anywhere along that line? Four. And there's our, there's our three equations. So if it's less than zero, we follow this equation. If it's between zero and four, we follow this equation. And if it's anything greater than four, we follow the third one. Yes, Karen. Where did we get the what, sir? So I found points along that what, that line that were whole numbers. Easy for me to read. Whole numbers. Yeah? So intersects at 1 and negative 2. Easier to read than, say, trying to read negative 1 third and two and three quarters off of a graph. It's, it's really hard to do that. It's not worth it, so you just try and find points that are integers along your axis, all right? Now, if you don't want to try and find it that way, you can think about the two endpoints as well. All right? So it's gone from negative four to four. How much has that changed? Gone up by eight, so four to get to zero, another four to get to four. And then how much has x changed? Gone from zero to four. And so what's eight divided by four? Still two. Yeah? Cool. All right. Last example, and I'll get you guys to try this by yourself. This one is going to go through our domain, so we need to be, we need to figure those out first. 
and then have to think about the rest. All right. So it's already told us the first one. All right. Generally trying to define it from left to right, which is what the book's done for us. X is less than or equal to negative four, hence the solid dot. All right, solid dot means equal to, which is why they've got that symbol there. Can we think of the equation for a horizontal line or for this horizontal line? Y is equal to five, and we're done. All right, so what are we looking at next? We've got this line here that goes between negative 4 and 0. Yeah? So we've got open dots. So are we using equal to or are we using the not equal to? Not equal to. So we've got negative 4 and 0, not equal to, and x in between. Okay, and what's our function? What's y equal to? Three. Three? Horizontal line, so it's really easy to do. Pretty sure. Why do you ask? Negative four over this side. But then it would say x is less than negative four. But for this function, it's between negative 4 and 0. Yeah? So x is greater than negative 4, so it's to the right of negative 4, and less than 0, so it's in between those two pieces there. But it's not equal to, so we use the open dots. Cool. Next line. We're looking between, where's the x value for the beginning of this line? Zero. And where's the x value for the end of that line? All right, so we've got zero and three, x is in between. All right. So are we using, we've got closed dots, so what symbol are we going to use? Yeah, we've got the equal to signs this time. All right, equal to on both ends, thankfully. And then, what's our equation? We've got to get the slope. All right, so how much has y changed? It's gone down from 0 to negative 3. So it's a decrease in 3. How much has x changed? So, change in y over change in x, negative 1. And what's my y-intercept? Cool. It is 0. All right. It's not 1, it's not negative 1, it's in between at the origin or where the two axes cut, so it's just at 0. So. Our equation is just negative x. All right, last one. What's it defined for? So for what x values are we thinking about this for? From 3 onwards. All right, so it's not in between. How do we write this then? So x is always going to be bigger than 3 here. x is greater than 3. We have a open dot. Do we need the equal sign? No? Cool. And then what's our function here? M and C. How much has X and Y changed? 
Y has changed from 0 to 3. That's an increase in 3. X has changed from 3 to 7. So it's an increase in 4. So change in Y over change in X. It's just 3 quarters. Probably just leave that as the fraction. All right. Y intercept. Not zero, because we need to think about this line going backwards. Yeah, I reckon so. I went a little bit on the horizontal. Oh, there's a bit of a diagonal instead of a horizontal. That might make things a little bit better. Our slope is 1. All right. And what's our y-intercept? We're going backwards by 1. Or what's another way to do it? Any ideas? Just spent the last week learning about this. If you're not sure, default to the equation. Do we know a point along this line? Yeah, well, let's start here, because that's probably pretty easy to do. We know the point. What's the x-coordinate? x-coordinate? 3. What's the y-coordinate? 0. So it's 3 to the right, and nowhere up or down. And we know our slope. So we've got, oops, wrong way around. 0 is equal to 1 lot of 3 add C. So C's got to be negative 3. So we've got X, take 3. 1X, take 3. All right. Or, because you guys have got books and less likely to do diagonal lines like I just, just, just did a second ago, all right, you can extend that line with a ruler and just read off the graph. Use the graph to your advantage because it, it does most of the work for you. All right, quick recap. We have our domain. We need to think about the x values that that line exists for. All right, you can think about it first, last. Closed dot means we've got to have equal to. Open dot without the equal signs. And then lastly, we just need to be coming up with the equations just like we've been practicing recently. Any questions? No, ready to get this a shot? Cool, I'm ready to turn this off. Carol's? Uh, no. No? <laughs>